Hello, welcome to once more another very exciting edition of um, International Medical Graduate Abroad. I am so excited today to be your host and today we will be talking about how to get some paid internship or observership which is really a great stepping stone or a great way to get your, your name known, to get to meet people and to build your network which will really be very important for your career here in North America and I would just be outlining some of the opportunities or some of the sites that you should check out as a foreign trained healthcare professional or as a medical doctor who is looking for um, a way to practice medicine in Canada or in the US. And these are all opportunities that you can find out there. It's like you could reach out to this institution or to these different people and talk to them and just present to them what you're looking for and what you need and don't be surprised you'll be able to get something so there are several opportunities out there and a lot of people really are not aware of these opportunities for canada the majority of the people will know that um, there is just CARMS, which is the Canadian Residency Marching Service which is usually there and i can leave the link in the description it's just um, a platform where you do apply actually to get a real residency but today we'll be talking a little more on other things that you can do while holding that home country practice permit but not yet ready to practice um, in Canada alongside as you're preparing for your medical licensing exam say you're preparing for the MCCQE1 um, exams here in Canada or the clinical exams or you're preparing for the step one um, in the US or the step two um, clinical knowledge exams all of these are things that you should be doing alongside while studying and while trying to sit for these exams so the most important and the first thing that I'll advise here is that you should get into contact with university affiliated teaching hospitals. University affiliated teaching hospitals are really, really the stepping stones. They are the key to the door to getting into the system because no matter where, when you get residency, finally you get into a system and get trained. For some people or some of us, if you're a specialist already from your home country and you're looking for ways to get into similar or same specialty here in North America, there are other part ways that you can use. Um, so the most important thing would be maybe getting a fellowship or an observership. And these are really, really golden opportunities that you get to meet people. You get to meet the real program directors. You get to meet other residents who are already um, into residency. You get to meet other people who are key players in the health um, ecosystem. And this is really important because if you know someone, it's likely you would recommend them compared to some random CV you have in your hand. You're reading, you don't know what this person is as it, um, in terms of their character. You don't know what your smile looks like. I know nowadays it's hard, that's why we might have interviews. But again, just working with someone, right? It gets you closer to knowing who that person really is beyond the professional. Um, career beyond the job itself you get to know them as a person and as a citizen as a as a partaker in a community and so starting with university affiliated teaching hospitals is really great so there's many university affiliated teaching hospitals that exist all around Canada and they do offer internships um, I'm gonna put a link for that for the University of Calgary in BC and Toronto in the description. So please check it out and you can apply their times along the year that observership and internship positions are open for foreign trained healthcare professionals, particularly for um, international medical graduates, um, be it general physicians or specialists, there are usually internships that are open. And these programs um, offer also various clinical experiences that it might offer. And these programs usually sometimes have like really, you know, handsome or substantial compensations that um, might be helpful to you and your family. And then there is also other research um, websites and research projects that are ongoing. I have put the link in the description box for the University of Calgary. You can check it out and you could have, you know, paid internship position within the University of Calgary within a specific program. If you're interested in cardiology, for instance, and you want to go to, you know, 
have internship or do fellowship in that space then it's a good thing to always check on the website just to see um, what is available at that particular period so these openings are not openings that are conventionally there but from time to time they are there and that's why I advise that you always have an eye to check the next thing will be research fellowships this research fellowships are really really important and they are easy to get and they're readily available depending on if that institution really does some kind of research but by default today all physicians are researchers so all clinicians can get involved into some kind of clinical research or some kind of clinical trial or observational study whatever it is writing peer-reviewed articles systemic review systematic reviews and meta-analysis these are all things that by default a physician does. So there are research fellowships that are out there. There is, um, um, and these research fellowships are usually offered most of the time by research institutions and medical centers in Canada. And they have, um, you know, open options for foreign trained healthcare professionals. I've left the link in the description. You should check that out. And these positions often involve, you know, conducting um, research in specific medical fields. Again, as I said, and exploring this website will be a very good way for you to see what options are currently available for internationally trained medical professionals, especially internationally trained medical doctors. Having a prior uh, research experience or a background in research is really um, a great asset, but it's not the only thing that you need to have per se. But having that and having a love for research and a love to help is really something that can drive and, and increase your chances of being hired, especially if you have to go for like a short, quick 30, one hour interview with um, the different program directors. Moving on, it's um, provincial medical associations. Provincial medical associations are wide across Canada. So um, provincial medical associations in Canada may offer resources and information on internships, just observerships and other opportunities. Um, just working, um, physician support, community um, activities and certain you know um, specific medical intervention based on your specialty your experience and your background these are all opportunities that you can usually have and it's always good to have an eye open and they can provide guidance on available programs in respective fields and respective provinces so usually you have a summary where they tell you what position is open in what province across Canada and these are golden opportunities for you to just check it out and apply I will put the link um, on the websites in the description box so that you can get into contact and you can reach out just maybe through an email and someone is going to reach out to you and answer you and provide you answers to the questions that you have and if you're a good fit for that position for sure um, you would be um, taken and then um, the next one is research Canadian Medical Association and societies so these are groups um, that have openings and have links and connections with different um, hospitals. So exploring their website um, to see what these um, you know, Canadian Medical Association have to offer is really important. Provincial medical associations as well and specialty specific societies usually will have specific openings that are there. If you're if you have a background in general medicine or general practice as a whole, you can check on various websites. If you have specialty in say oncology in some field in internal medicine and in surgery and pediatrics whatever field you're a specialist in you can check it out um, check out specific you know um, societies just to see what they have there and they're offering they usually have positions from time to time they open and they'll put it on their website and i'll put some websites in the I'll put a link to some websites in the description box below. Please check it out and you might find something that best suits you. So um, usually they will provide like detailed information in terms of opportunities that are out there and trainings that are out there. And the most important ones, as I said, is um, checking out university affiliated teaching hospitals as well. There are other uh, government programs that exist across Canada. So the government provides um you know certain health opportunities and so this is further out and provincial government they provide um, programs and initiatives that 
aim to support and integrate you know foreign trained healthcare professionals just visiting the government of canada's website checking ircc website is also very important and sometimes you can see opportunities there especially in remote communities where sometimes they might be looking for um, you know foreign trained healthcare professionals or just physicians as a whole and you know many physicians might not wish to work in a remote areas but it's always a good area to start if you start there then you grow up and you get to meet a lot of people then you get to practice medicine and you have the Canadian experience which is usually very um, important for most of the jobs that you would let her apply for so I urge and I really encourage you to take this opportunity check out these links in the description and apply for what suits you never be shy from applying just go there apply and once you're applying make sure you tailor your cv to really suit that particular position make sure you have that background experience as well it's really important and once you have it make sure you tell your cv and your letter um, of motivation to really cover that particular position and there is high chances that you get it because there is really that um, huge demand there's also international organizations that have activities that go on here and there say um, world health organization and nonprofit um, focusing organizations as well and they usually provide information um, for you know positions that are open internships and observerships um, just for you to participate and take um, you know part in global health decision making how to control you know the crises that affect the globe as a whole and these opportunities are usually there might be few for North America or developed countries but if you're someone who's interested in looking at um, you know, disenfranchised communities, that can be a very excellent opportunity and direction to tilt towards. Um, but from time and again, there are other opportunities that do occur in North America for North American positions as well. So um, check these websites out. Please do not neglect it. If you have any questions, type them in the chat. We're more than happy to help and to support you. Like and share this video as well and we will see you in the next one.